Brian Kilmeade suddenly realizes that maybe uh, the media should be a little more responsible with this whole ivermectin thing. Here's Brian Kilmeade talking to Steve Krakauer, Megan Kelly's producer on her podcast. All right. <laughs> Guys, get ready. By the way, however it turns out, whatever you decide to do, uh, was developed and awarded a Nobel Prize back in 2015. It combats river blindness and tropical maladies. Not Sometimes coming. drugs work for different things. For some people, they chose to try it. It wasn't uh, it wasn't out there to make a mockery of. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, our, our own CDC right now is recommending that refugees to the country take it. Uh, again, not for COVID necessarily. For COVID. That's being tested right now. But the idea that it's it's for horses and for cows, which is the storyline that's being pushed in the media now, whether it's to combat Joe Rogan, who's sit, talking about that as one of the treatments that he used to take, you know, after he got COVID. This is being prescribed by doctors. This is not being, you know, people are not taking this from their horses and eating it. But but this is what you get. And I, and I think really what it comes down down to is there, there's this greater good aspect to this right now. You know, the, the media says, OK, well, we got this story wrong. But hey, you know, if we could have just maybe stopped some people from taking ivermectin, maybe we can get more people to take the vaccine if we put the storyline. At least at least there's some greater good to it. You know, at least we're, we're our hearts in the right place. Well, that's not really the way you go about journalism. That's not how you get, gain any sort of trust. And when we're talking about something as serious as COVID, as serious as this pandemic that's been going on for 18 months, you have a responsibility to get the story right. And and tell your audience what's actually happening in the country. This is um, insane. Insane. Like, I don't know how really. Um, I mean, this is uh, God, I, 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 I hate to to use, uh, you know, brave new world type of talk and uh, Orwellian. But I mean, it really is. It, it is. It is lunacy. Uh, they are complaining about a local journalist, uh, local outlet in Oklahoma, which reported that there was an Oklahoma hospital that was overrun by ivermectin overdoses. And it turned out, um, and then every, you know, uh, national outlet, I, I think we probably mentioned it too, did we? I don't know. It was on Friday, so I don't really even remember talking about it. Well, we, maybe we didn't, but um, I may have seen it. Um, and um, all these national outlets ran with it. And it turns out there was only, you know, 500 ivermectin overdoses in August versus 50 the, you know, year over year. Uh, so up by 450. I mean, that's a lot. Ten times more uh, ivermectin overdoses. Apparently, there was a ton of... Um, prescriptions by doctors uh, prescribing this, um, the human form, to the point where it was creating ivermectin shortages for people who might be coming from overseas and may, may have uh, parasites that are more prevalent in other countries where the drinking water's not clean all the time or the food's not necessarily um, uh, processed in the same type of facilities. There is no evidence that ivermectin inhibits COVID in human beings. There is no evidence. There was some evidence that in a laboratory setting, ivermectin could maybe inhibit a COVID. It is um, an extremely experimental drug. The idea that an experimental drug, there's a far more experimental um, cancer treatments that exist that we never hear talked about, that don't become this like rallying cry. How come the media is suppressing talk of this experimental drug? Like what, like what are people doing when they make that the issue? Like wait, Doctors have prescribed it like in an extraordinary amount in August versus past years. So it's not like doctors aren't aware of it. Now, listen, doctors get things wrong. Doctors are subjected are, are subject to the same influences that the rest of us are. If it's all over Fox and they be like, well, you know, uh, I don't have time to read every single study or to see that a bunch of these studies are recanted. Mm hmm. 
and I can prescribe it, I'll prescribe it because I'm going to throw the kitchen sink at this. In fact, one of the ways that doctors were wrong is that some of them thought that ivermectin might be useful as a prophylaxis for COVID, and it's not. So <laughs> not at all. Look at that's how science works. Exactly. Doctors also were under the impression that OxyContin, in many instances, was not as uh, addictive as other opioids because it was in someone's interest to say that. But we as a society know that to the extent ivermectin is or is not helpful, it is not a prophylactic, it should not even be brought up in the same conversation as things like mask wearing or vaccination. Right. And if you're gonna exert your energy on the uh, suppression of talk about ivermectin, Um, you better know exactly what it is the benefit's going to be there. Because to not give the benefit of the doubt, yes, there's a story here or there that an Oklahoma hospital, but, you know, let's look at the implications of, of what that story were. Like, that's the important thing. That's the way you assess a mistake, even one that is motivated by sheer desire for clickbait. What is the damage done? The damage done by def by even doing that segment we just saw on Fox is probably far greater than the the sin that they're talking about. Mm, absolutely. Because it's going to convince people that wait, there's a secret truth that's being suppressed. Yeah, because that's all like a lot of these people are interested in the story for. They'll even wipe their hands of, I don't know specifically about ivermectin, but this is about the media and how they, no, it's not. The, like the media doesn't control what doctors can prescribe to their patients. This is about the media and the establishment. Exactly. Not wanting people to have their own solution to this worldwide pandemic. We're all supposed to be living on our own private pandemics. And all we need to do is consult our phone to get all the information we need. I'm going to do my own research because when I'm not a, you know, YouTuber or when I'm not um, critiquing, uh, you know, some general aspect of culture or when I'm not, uh, you know, making the delivery of oil in my oil truck or when I'm not, you know, um, uh, waiting tables or when I'm not, you know, serving a, a de you know, or writing up a deposition. I'm also a part time epidemiologist and uh, no, you know, I can uh, I can read into this stuff. Yeah. And it's a lie to say that people aren't going to the vet to source this stuff, because that that's the real problem with um, peddling this in the context of a media suppression of a cure narrative, because that arms people to go to the doctor and their doctor says, actually, though, no, that's not approved for uh, COVID treatment. So I'm not going to give that to you. So then what do people do? And in this country, their market provides. So you go to the vet because that's a like people can make a joke out of it, but that's a common thing that people do because it's hard to get drugs at the best of times for um in this country because of how expensive it is so you go and get the animal alternative and try to you know get the uh, dosage right somehow and so you're basically um you're encouraging that behavior when you put it in the context of the suppressed cure narrative and what do you think the behavior of someone who has taken ivermectin and is convinced that he has the or she has the secret uh, prophylactic yeah do you think they get the vaccine yeah no I don't need to mask up. I'm, I got my ivermectin. I'm good. I got my, you know, whatever it is. Like Brett Weinstein took ivermectin on his show. The only use that could be because he didn't have COVID at the time was as a prophylaxis. That is absolutely like dangerous to the point of getting your audience killed messaging. Why doesn't he take a whole series of different drugs? Let's see what happens. I mean, the kitchen sink at it like Joe Rogan. Yeah. I mean, it really is nuts. It really is nuts. And, and, What's fascinating is to watch those people who are out pushing the ivermectin as a way of trying to get some of Joe Rogan's either attention, uh, audience, or get into his good graces. Yeah, well, the, the, the horse pace thing is the perfect opportunity to them because they can dip their toes and say, actually, there's a, on, a real human um, usages for this. And all the horse pace people are doing groupthink. And that's all they, they don't have to actually get into like the uh, awful message. The substance. About, yeah, exactly. The substance. You can just get into the meme, the, the culture war of it. These yep. people are ultimately culture warriors. Absolutely. 100%. Total culture war. And they're pretending they're not. Yep. 
they're just choosing like a you know sort of a a culture that is adjacent folks there's more of what you've just saw where that came from that's if you hit the subscribe and like button thank you really thank you